because uh, he's pushing me to keep this thing modern and I'm trying to push him to, to make it more powerful in the front. Uh, we haven't solved that problem yet. All of it stays where it is and then all the action takes place in there. Yes. One of the things that I always say is uh, this car is as much about what I leave off of it as, 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 as it is what I put in. Uh, and so you, you, you really identify three or four design cues on this vehicle. The, the grill area, the side and air intake, uh, the, the windscreen's simplicity, and most importantly, that powerful bulge over the rear wheel signifying that that's where the power comes to the ground. Those are the cues that, that scream out uh, the original Cobra. So to take those, incorporate them in it into a new contemporary design, and leave just enough space between all of those elements that you let the audience fill in the blank is the, is, is the trick to designing an automobile. You don't want to tell the whole story. You want to leave some of the story to the audience's imagination. And if you can do that, you probably got a winner. That's getting good. It's getting good. That's getting good. That's really, that is really starting to turn me on. Daisy is starting to come together, but they're not yet at the checkered flag. There are still key design decisions to be made. And then there's the matter of putting it all together. Uh, the next main hurdle that I have is taking the concept clay model, um, fabricating the actual body panels where it makes the transition from design concept to reality. But the design is just one part of the puzzle. Another crucial phase is underway in Detroit. The development of the gears. Ready? The Top Gear team begins the task of assembly on Daisy's new V10. Jump to set it in. Their starting point, the lower part of the engine. All bolts are tightened using uniform stress to ensure that this custom engine will stand up to the track. Let's get the sharp lock rolling here. Step two, the upper end. Yeah. Yep. That's really quick. And then the fuel system begins to come together. Good. Really roll pretty quick. Put these air bleeds in the side below the throttle plate, which will get a little jet valve like this. To balance. Yep. Balance each individual cylinder once the intake's completed. Yeah, yeah. But in the end, it's all about speed. And the right grade of petrol will make all the difference. Yes, yeah, it's not a. But Henry and Kevin, you're going to like this. We're actually going to run 106 octane racing fuel in this motor for a number of reasons. Uh, one, it smells good, and two, I think your engine's going to like it. <laughs> Turbo blue. Uh, That's like right. It. Stuff is sweet, isn't That's it? That's good. Generally speaking, I think 100 out of 100 people would tell you that they find exhaust gas obnoxious. But if you ask the same 100 people, if they were automotive enthusiasts, they'd find racing fuel to, to be almost an aphrodisiac. It's a smell that, that people associate with performance in race. So we're going to go in addressing everything right down to the smell of the vehicle. Give me the new garage. This is it, the launch of the much anticipated V10 engine. As the engineering team makes the final adjustments, the pressure mounts. Throttles open, crank. Nothing on the timing light. It usually takes months or even years to shake down an engine. The Daisy team had just four days. As they turn the key, 
everyone has the same question. How good will she go? This is Ford's new twist on the classic Cobra. Codenamed Daisy. With only two months left before its debut, the new sports car is quickly coming together. And after a series of high performance tests, adjustments and more tests, the engineering team is ready to unveil the car's powerful V10 engine. Ready to start it? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah. What's that to control? Try it again. Stop it. It ain't right. The timing's off. They ran 50 starts on the dynamometer, and all everything was perfect. Now you put the whole system into the car, it didn't work anymore as well. Mike? Yeah? Yep. There's, there's no way we can back a little timing out of this thing in the computer. Like five degrees at a time? I can make adjustments, sure. Back five out of it, and let's try it again. The engine turns over, but something's still not quite right. The V10 is not running at full capacity. The team starts another round of troubleshooting. You won't believe this. The crew they said, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm not going to go home until I solve the problem. So I went home at about 10.30, 11.30 at late at night. And the next morning I went back to Roush again. Next morning the engine was running perfectly at about 7 o'clock. 7.30 I was there, 7.30 in the morning, and they said they got the engine to run at 6.35. So the entire crew worked through the entire night, didn't come home at all, at 6.35, and then Friday morning the engine was perfect. 14 hours later, the pistons are moving smoothly. They bring Carol Shelby, inventor of the original, in for another look. How's that smell? Smells a little fat to me. <laughs> the, the hardware is working good. We're going to work out a couple little software issues, and uh, I think she'll be rocking. Ah, oh, that's great. Now you get everything else all right? Yeah, we are. We're, no runs, no drips, no errors. <laughs> well, that's great, guys. Meanwhile, back in L.A., a new arrival. body together and then it's on to showtime. It's, then it's all going to be uh, asses and elbows to get that car together. Uh, the problems with legends is that no one wants you to mess with them unless you're going to improve on that legend. And in the American custom car market, few cars are as legendary as the Cobra. The car made the name. The car made my name. I hope we got another one that does the same thing. Most of the stylistic decisions are finalized, and Daisy is starting to take shape. The designers have decided on a fiberglass shell with touches of carbon fiber. Next, the team works to finish and assemble the hundreds of one-off pieces that will make up their mega motor. Whether it's a gauge, a shift lever, a body panel or a latch, 